Hi everyone, Mike here, and this time I'll be painting the Barbarian from Hero Quest. As you can see, I've primed him in black, and then I'm going to spray him from his top right side with Corax White Primer. This is going to create some slightly more interesting shadows on the body than if I sprayed it from directly above. Since he's in a dungeon, the light source could perhaps be a torch on the wall. Zenithal Prime is going to act as a guide for where to put the colors for the skin, and I'm going to start off with the shadowed areas. I'm mixing Bugman's Glow with some Cantor Blue to create a darker, more desaturated version of the Bugman's Glow. I've thinned this down with a bit of water, so the first layer is going to look a bit patchy, but I'm leaving it as it is, then applying a second and, if necessary, third layer after the first one dries. Here's how the Barbarian is looking so far. Next, I'm moving on to a lighter skin color. This one is Cardic Flesh from P3. This is very similar to the color Cadian Flesh Tone by Games Workshop. Right now, I'm not overly concerned with blending these colors yet, but you can start the process by having a little bit of overlap between the lighter and the darker skin color. When overlapping the colors, I'm pulling my brush from the darker areas into the light so that I'm only leaving a thin layer of the lighter color on top of the darker one. Once I have a good solid base coat, I'm then going back and blending the edges together by brushing more of the light colored paint across the boundary between the light and the dark. Next I'm mixing a midway color, thinning it with some water and doing the same thing again. This time though, I'm extending a bit further into the darker skin color, but once again I am brushing from the light into the dark. Here's how the Barbarian is looking now. You can see I left a little bit of dark underneath the right cheekbone to give it some definition. And for the same reason, I added the lighter skin color to the top of the left cheekbone. Next, I'm using Pure Bugman's Glow. This is going to be the highlight color for the darker areas of the skin. I'm putting this on the top half of the muscles on the left shoulder, arm, and leg, and on top of the fingers. I'm avoiding all the grooves in the muscles. I want those to stay dark for definition. Now I'm going to highlight all of the light areas of the skin by mixing a bit of bright yellow and white into the cardic flesh. As with all these colors, I'm adding about an equal amount of water, or even a bit more, so I can get a nice translucent paint. It's always better to add multiple thin layers when doing this to get smoother transitions. This time I'm adding the highlight to the top of the muscles, moving my brush upward on the arms and legs to where the imaginary light would be coming from. As before, I'm avoiding the grooves in the muscles. I'm also adding this to the right side of the nose, the cheekbones, brow, and the tip of the chin. Next I'm painting the eyes, and the first thing I'm doing is adding a dark wash made from about four parts water and one part rhinoxide. This is going over the entire eye socket, and he's going to look a bit like a raccoon at first. Next, I'm using some ivory and dragging it across the eyes to create the whites of the eye. If I mess this up, I'll just come back in with some rhinoxide. Then I used German Grey for the irises, and at first I tried to make him look straight ahead, but he looked insane. So I started over, and this time I put a dark dot on the right side of the eye and an ivory dot on the left side, and that looked a lot better. After the eyes were done, I came back in with some Bugman's Glow and touched up the areas where there was too much brown around the eye. I also used some of the Rhinoxide wash on the lips. Here's how the Barbarian is looking now, and I wanted to deepen the color and some of the grooves and shadows on the muscles, so I used the darkest skin color, the blue and Bugman's Glow, and I mixed in a bit of the Rhinoxide. I used this like a thin wash and just put it in some of the darkest areas, like between the fingers and between some of the muscles that needed more contrast.
Next up is the loincloth and boots. The loincloth is first getting a base coat of 5050 Cantor Blue and Doombull Brown. After that, I'll paint all of the raised bits of fur with pure Doombull Brown. I'm going to follow that up with an edge highlight on the fur using XV88, but only on the side that's facing the imaginary light source. The dark side of the boots are getting a couple coats of equal parts black in XV88, while the lit side is getting pure XV88. For the fur along the top of the boots, I'm using Screaming Skull. These boots have a lot of little details that I want to bring out, so I'm covering them completely with Agrax Earthshade. Once the wash is dry, I'll reapply the XV88 to the lit side of the boots, but leave a line of shade around all of the details. Next, I'm painting the entire belt with German Grey, the same color I used for the eyes. Next, I'm using Mechanicus Standard Grey to paint all of the raised details on the belt. The little rivets or stones on the belt are being painted with glorious gold. I'm painting the hilt of the sword with this color too, but I'm painting the inside area and the shadowed part of the hilt with Balthazar gold. Next I'm putting a wash of Reichland Flesh Shade over everything that was just painted gold. Finally for the gold, I'm using a slightly brighter gold color and I'm putting a small dab on the rhinestones and on the most prominent part of the hilt. For the sword, I'm going to mix a few different colors. The dark side of the blade is being painted with equal parts gunmetal, abaddon black, and cantor blue. Though after applying it as you see here, I did add a bit more black and go over it again. The lit side of the blade is being painted with plate mail metal, which is slightly lighter than the gunmetal. I'm then wet blending three shades onto the blade. The bottom third of the blade will be the dark color I used on the other side. The middle will be a halfway color between plate mail metal and this dark color. Finally, the top third will be just plate mail metal. To finish it off, I'm using my brightest silver color, shining silver, and edge highlighting both edges of the sword and the ridge that runs up the middle. Next I'm painting the hair, and for this I'm using Black Templar Contrast Paint to get it started off. After that I'm using Skaven Blight Dinge and painting all of the hair except for the recesses. Next I'm switching to a slightly lighter grey, Storm Vermin Fur, and painting the front tips of the hair, the top of the head, and just where the hair starts to meet the top of the shoulders. And just to create a little more contrast, I'm using some black contrast paint just under the crown of the head. 
The Barbarian is nearly complete, I just need to paint a base for him that matches the aesthetic of the Hero Quest game board. I played around with some colors until I settled on Stegadon Scale Green for the main color. Then I painted on some large squares using a black paint and drew in a few cracks and pits on the ground. Finally, I used a lighter color to trace along the left and top sides of the squares where possible. Not all of the squares had these edges visible. Once this was finished, I sprayed the Barbarian with a matte varnish. And here he is in all his late 80s glory. There's something satisfying about painting these simple models. After painting so much 40k, I needed a mental break and this guy fit the bill perfectly. Thank you to all my patrons for supporting these videos, and a special thanks to Brian Jones. I've heard rumors of a HeroQuest remake on the horizon. I don't know how true they are yet, but if that's the case, you'll definitely be hearing more about it on this channel. Anywho, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and thanks for watching.